Oh snap, we are going live. Going live, <coughs> we're doing a hand jive, cause we're going live and it's great. Great, number eight. Don't know why we're saying number eight, 2018. Even even what amounts to two weeks <laughs> off is enough that it doesn't it doesn't smell quite as tasty. Mm. What does I it? think two weeks ago it'd have been like, oh yeah. <laughs> So what does it smell like now, Tomo? It smells the same. It's just something less motivating about it, which is good. Normal. <laughs> oh, hello. Didn't see you coming in. No, I'm just playing. I totally scripted this. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome. This is uh, this is having a drink with uh, Tomo and Sarah right now, and whoever wants to join. So that's what we're doing. And. Uh, Got my Epic Tavern game going on here. We're going to talk some design stuff. We're going to talk about life. We're going to talk about whatever you want to talk about. I hope you guys have Within some questions. Reason. Hope that you guys might maybe have some questions. And if not, then uh, I'll just question everything that I'm doing in life. No, I'm just playing. Um, so we got a couple people up here in the chat. Who do we have up in the chat? All right. So we have our viewers. We have Biaki and Jamie and the 8-Bit Crab and Wild Dragon. You thank you guys so very much for joining us today. So yeah, we're just gonna we're gonna talk Epic Tavern. We're gonna talk video games. We're gonna talk game development. Whatever you guys want to talk about. So uh, gonna talk about what we're up to. Um, just to let you know, we did post an update on our Steam page uh, this past week. So feel free to get up on that. And, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's that. So, with that being said, let's get some music in the background. Let's load the game here. Uh, I think my stable tavern. Let's get stable tavern so that we have some good tavern music. Maybe I should go full screen on this. Oh, well, yeah, whatever. Whatever. <coughs> Doing it live! So, uh, yeah, it's Wednesday. Usually, uh, Memage is on Wednesdays, but we will have him next week, so we're really excited to have him back. We're going to ask him all the questions about Prince Tristan, and uh, it'll be a fun time for and those of you. a new parent of two. I know. Parent of two. Tobo knows all about being parent of two, so he's, uh, he's excited to see how, uh, how Memage's journey is going. But how are you guys doing? What is going down in Chinatown? But uh, yeah, so for those of you that are playing the game um, and following our updates and things like that, you see that we're doing a lot of design work. Um, not only writing, Sean has been working so hard writing all sorts of fun stuff for you guys uh, in the very near future, but uh, we're doing a lot of design work. So maybe Tomo um, can actually give us a little insight on some of the things that we're working on. I know I mentioned uh, some tavern, um, some things happening in the tavern. So maybe you can give me some, some insight while I sip on, what am I sipping on? Um, I think it is a bourbon called Old, no, it's called like Portis, not called Portis Head. Yeah, we both poured some, but I, because I'm I'm getting all blinded by that putiny that's down Old there. Portera. Old Portera. Got it. Got it. Got it. I think it is a middling, decent quality bourbon. Yeah, I mean it has a good has a good smell to it. So cheer. I don't know. Cheers. All right. So, um, yeah. So tavern. You know there there's been a lot of. Oh, yeah. There we go. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's been a lot of talk about some uh, designing, some tavern experience things uh, in tavern experience and improving that. So I know that I've mentioned, uh, we have all have mentioned uh, drink combos and things of that nature. So maybe you could tell us kind of what the pro... Well, I think at the highest level, what we're doing is we're really preparing to get the game. Like, we're trying to understand what it is going to take to get the game from its early access what that means in its kind of broadest sense, you know, the game's not quite done, we're still exploring different ideas, we're still trying to figure out how best to express all the various features and, and aspirations we have for the game. Right. And, and get it to actually to full release. And so, uh, a lot of the design that's been going on has been kind of going back through the game and starting to kind of like draw the shoelaces tighter and mm -hmm. starting to get everything working together, get the things or the pieces of the systems that we, we barely got in and figuring out how to get them all the way across the line, how they all interact with each other. And kind of a big starting point for that, because 
we haven't just been designing um, our tavern experience and I mean, the that's drinking. Still going. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and we have mentioned drink chain combos, but uh, drink chain combos is just a uh, it's our solution for how to create some structure in the experience during a tavern turn. Yes. Um, I think one of the problems with uh, the experience in the tavern before was that there are all these characters in the tavern, they all have these icons floating over their head, and mm -hmm. as the player you have 50 action points and you're free to just do whatever you want, and every individual choice you make is the same as every other individual choice you make. And the same may be underselling it, but uh, not enough uh, organization uh, for the player and too much it's too homogenous uh, too homogenous an experience to be uh, repeatedly clicking on characters and just kind of giving them what they want right and so to that effect what drink chain combos do is they they basically turn the tavern social experience into a talk to a person and give them what they want or try to focus on a character so that you can get more relationship with them so that you can hire them or so that you can move something along with their personal story or whatever the things that you could have done before and then every time that happens that precipitates a round of drinking in the tavern and you know what i like about uh, what i like about this personally is that in essence we're making the conversation with the patron simpler <laughs> and basically, but we're not we're not guiding it as opposed to we're we're giving the player I feel more agency with this because we're giving them the choice where they're going to go with it. But we're, we're, in some ways, we're taking away some of the agency so that at the larger level they have more agency because mm -hmm. before you could basically do everything right against each other. The analogy I was drawing was that part of the problem with the socializing in the tavern was that it was really amounted to like stuffing your hand in a bag full of stones and just pulling up handfuls of stones. And that even if the stones were different from each other, they weren't different enough that when you had a big handful of them that it felt some, you felt right. or understood what was going on. Um, so now what will happen is you'll only get to pull out 10 individual stones, so to speak. You'll get 10 action points and you'll get to interact with 10 characters and each of those choices will become more meaningful. You'll have to choose amongst the characters that are visible to you and pick them, choose them because of what they have floating over their head instead of just getting to everything floating over their head. And that's heightening heads. kind of that risk factor too. Like I only have this much to, you know, this much to spend mm -hmm. and this, you know, to do with the And you'll characters. have to pick and choose for sure. Right. Um, right. And then there's also the, the, the drink chain combos also allow for us to let a lot more drinking happen in the tavern. So in a lot of ways, the drink chain combos hey. are the repeated <laughs> rounds of drinks. Right. Uh, starts creating a... Uh, a more, or, or creates the beginnings of a, of a legitimate party-like bar drinking experience. Yeah, I like that. And I so like hopefully that. a lot more drunkenness will actually get people passing out more organically in the game, or at least getting drunk and tipsy. Um, you'll get to make your 10 choices with the characters that are in the tavern. Uh, another kind of detail worth noting is that any character that is ever that has that that's on your roster will always be present in the tavern unless they are actually out adventuring. Mm, nice. Uh, so it should make your managing of those characters uh, a lot more straightforward. Uh, there won't be like uh, turns where you can't talk to someone. Oh, okay. Um, so with that being said, then at some point, because how many seats are in this tavern? I mean, we have. Let's we see. We cap out at about twenty-one. Okay. Yeah. But we One, won't. Two, we three, won't. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. If you play a lot, you can get yeah, like 11, 19. I think you can get 11 roster slots. Yeah. So yeah, it kind of, again, it kind of heightens that being very selective in a way, which yeah. I like. And, and an additional thing with that is too, is that you, t you, you tend to have people out adventuring. So a lot of the adventurers that are on your roster are out doing stuff mm -hmm. on any given day. Um, this gives us some tools. When they return, now something can happen. Right. Uh, they can talk about the, the quest that they've been on more directly. It's A lot of this is organizing and making the turn of the tavern be um, more, in some ways more repetitive, but in a good way so that you get uh, acclimated to what the pattern is. Right now you can do whatever you want and anything can happen. And I think the, the lack of boundaries made it yeah. uh, hard to understand. Yeah, I, I, would say, I would say for me, as a, just as just a game player and, and everything, I, I, I can see what I can do and everything, but does does anything I click on actually mean something? And I think that with the new design that you guys are bringing to the table, uh, it's going to mean more. Yeah, and you'll stop and you'll think and you'll choose, or at yeah. least that's our hope. 
And then every time you do choose, you'll get to see a series of, of combo-like events uh, where it goes from one drink to the next drink to the next drink to the next drink. There's the very, very lightest of action mechanics there where you have to keep up with the clicking. That'll right. last maybe at most 10 seconds. And then you'll get uh, you know, information on the rewards and the amount of money you're making and people will have had drinks. And then a bunch of new options will show up and you'll get to choose again. Um, part of the idea too is as your tavern levels up that more, more and more drink ch longer drink chain combos will start happening and special uh, drink chain combo events will occur and it's inside that design idea that we intend to express things like uh, people buying a round of drinks so suddenly a lot of people have drinks available and you can chain out four more and then four more maybe. Um, so I want to talk. Fight. Yeah, I want to. I want to talk about the the drink combo system a little bit, just because we were we were talking about how it kind of reflects this uh, fajita effect. Fajita <laughs> what? A, the the fajita effect uh -huh. in a restaurant. So so when you go to a you know some sort of chain restaurant, I don't know, like Chili's or something, um, someone orders the fajita plate and the sizzling. Um, you know, cast iron skillet passes you by and all For of a sure. sudden you want something. <laughs> and that's kind of in an essence what's going to happen in the tavern, right? Um, it's going to be, you know, this this patron wants to drink. Oh, now this patron wants to drink. This patron wants to drink. And so we were laughing at the coincidence more so than it actually contributing to our thought of design. But it was it was kind of funny. Well, I mean, a lot of the design definitely tries. I mean, we I think we care more than a lot of other games to stick to kind of a natural feel. Uh, we want things to make sense. Uh, I mean, certainly we have, we're not averse to learning the mechanics of the game, mastering them, and then getting good results out of right. them in a conventional fashion. But also, for someone that isn't trying to do that, that the choices they make still produce results that make sense to them. I think that's really important because this is really an experiential vibe is a, a big part of this. Not that it isn't part of other games, but uh, in our design process, it's definitely one of the focuses. Right. Um, or would you call that a foci? 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 Yeah. Um, we'll call it a. We'll call so it a foci. Right just now. take a break from details <laughs> about the drink combo system. Right. Uh, uh, a lot of the difficulty in designing stuff for Epic Tavern has a lot to do with uh, the complexity of the game and all the things we're trying to accomplish. Right. And only a small subset of which we, we feel confident that we, we've actually expressed in the game. And so mm -hmm. a lot of these systems are trying to also uh, uh, create the right kind of connectivity between it and all the other systems. And so the Drink Chain Combo system will make use of character traits and um, I think you know we're basically targeting the beginning of March for our next patch, and we have a really high hopes about that patch. Uh, a lot of stuff is going to be happening, and a lot of stuff is going to be on Memage's shoulders when he comes back. Um, the, I think, I mean, really, I think the hope is that all of the love and awesomeness of having a kid <laughs> for the period of time he's been away right. has made him thirsty for, <laughs> in some ways, what amounts to the exact opposite, which is extremely technical, <laughs> complicated as all hell trying to navigate and engineer systems that, uh, that express all that complexity. Yes. And so to that effect, the traits system we've talked about many times over the course of the last couple years. Um, and partly I think everybody has a little bit of a different story with what they want out of them or what they mm. think they're going to be. Um, what do you want out of them? Well, what I want to say is that the real story is that it's all of those things. Um, that uh, through our traits, through what amount to um, data containers on characters that can contain any kind of data, it right. will be probably our pathway to representing inter-character relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, in the case of drink chain combos, it's going to be uh, certain traits like patience and impatience and teetotaler and, uh, you know, um, alcoholic. Those things will all have numerical impact on the percent chances of chaining combos and whether people want particular drinks. Uh, we're introducing an idea called wealth rank, uh, which, which I will love. represent I love, a character's love, wealth love, level. Love, yes. Yeah, and and that wealthy people will order more expensive drinks. Um, I love that. That will start. That'll start putting a, an interesting twist on your choices in terms of what you put on the menu uh, for the tavern. <laughs> Jack was like, drop it all on his desk. Just binders and binders of change logs for quests and bug reports yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on, well, on see, the that. The thing is, drag. <laughs> that is just the beginning. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's not too far off from uh, inevitably, what's kind of going to happen. <laughs> well, there's, there's, there's two directions on the number line, right? 
if we take zero as the present, all the negative numbers are dealing with the problems we have established in the past, but all the positive numbers are trying to fulfill all the aspirations for the future. Right. And so it's really, really, I mean, in our case, it really is complexity squared. <laughs> yeah, we are looking very forward to him being back, though, for sure. Uh, will the Kickstarter backer monuments start appearing in game soon or have any even been submitted yet? So, so, so to well, I'll I'll answer oh, no, the yeah, yeah I'll answer the the whole survey question. So we have not sent out the surveys yet. Um, I can't wait till we do because uh, I basically we have them all set up. It's just the the only reason that we haven't sent them sent them out yet is because the game is going through a lot of changes, and so we want to make sure that we are set for the most success for for you guys, and um, you know that that all we have to do is just plug your stuff into the game. I mean, that's really the, the long well, and short of it, right? Yeah, and I think, I mean, our drop dead date for that is whenever we actually go to full release, but I think we have exactly. a high, exactly. we're, we're highly motivated to make that happen soon. Absolutely. But I think that after this next patch, the game's gonna make a lot more sense it, with its internal consistency. Right. And that'll be, depending on how that turns out, I think the a more concrete timetable is gonna start happening real soon after that. Oh yeah, I'm excited. But uh, yeah, so what else? So keep, keep well, okay. So, so questions at the, at too. The, we at, at the higher level, like I was saying, like we're trying to connect all these systems and make sure we can get all the things we want to have happen happening. Right. And so, a lot of the design work, really, just as much design work has gone into the specific detailed uh, requirements for the drink chain combo system, and with the goal of that being to kind of like rationalize make more sense of add a fun mechanic to the tavern part of the uh, game experience. Mm -hmm. But that's just the beginning. The The design is really, all the design work we've been doing is trying to stitch together everything so that we can start making our way towards full release. And full release, well, what it is to us is a, is a complete game experience. And we, right. we know we a lot of you really enjoy the game out there, but I think you also know full well that it's not a complete game experience yet. Right. And uh, we're really... Uh, we appreciate your guys' involvement, and we love having you guys with us in this process. Agreed. Uh, but we're not, we're not uh, losing sight of, uh, of that fact. Right. And to that effect, um, this idea of bringing risk to the game, uh, you, know, you know it's possible for a character to die. Uh, it's oh, I'm great. I'm great at doing it, by the way. Well, it's also possible <laughs> when to I'm heal testing. I'm just and, like clicking through, not even paying attention to any stats, and I will have three characters die in a given two-hour time span. The goal has never been for characters just to die and to lose them. Uh, like, we have a really think? strong <laughs> philosophical stance on death, and that yeah. it is something that is you know is like a really it's a dark event that allows us to celebrate the life of that character or the history of that character and so i think uh um in a weird sort of way converting our system of light moderate and heavy wounds into a hit point based system that gives us more granularity mm -hmm. uh is an important first step towards kind of like unlocking or unlocking the first door to stitching together all the systems of the game Mm -hmm. um, there's only it's really there's only a technical reason for that because conceptually it's really just a matter of trying to create a management experience where you're making choices and you care about your characters and you don't want them to die you want to give them what they need you want to play with the system and see how things change when you right. make choices right um, agreed up until now uh, I would actually say we've been you know we're only only in the near term have we been starting to shift from building plumbing to actually servicing people with water <laughs> if that makes any sense you know that's funny that you put it that way i didn't even think about that way drax um asking a question real quick so he said um is there a tentative full release date i know you wanted to have the kickstarter bathhouse release this year but after full release so i would say date... tentatively we feel that the the outer limit of what we can do would be towards the end of summer that's the outer limit, and we're trying to figure out how to make it happen sooner. Yeah, and we can't make any promises, right? I mean, at, we, <laughs> we know... We can fail is really what it amounts to. We yeah. can fail. Yeah, and, and the thing is is that we, we don't want to fail you, and we don't want to fail 
the project, you know, we believe in this project very much so. And, of course and we, we do not want do to. As well. We try very of hard. Of course. But can I give you an but exact date? No. Do we have I mean, do we have happen. goals in mind? For sure. But um, we're not going to, you know, I can't make any promises. Well, the way Unless I would describe Sarah it. met you at Gamacon. <laughs> what? Mary Roots 95. Remind me who you are, Mary Roots 95. Speaking of wounds, will I was sad not to be or... at Gamacon. Dude, Gamacon was so fun. <laughs> I, went, I went like three years ago and it was great. You know, I... There were times where I was just, I, I wasn't sure beforehand going. I wasn't sure if, you know, eh, am I going to have fun? We'll see. But I went and it was so much fun. So Gamma much Con, fun. if anything, is fun. There's yeah. really no denying that. Yeah, and it was my first time out of the country ever. And oh, Jesus. Yeah, first time out of the country ever, first time to Gamma Con, and it was quite the pleasant experience. Marissa! Oh my God! You're with PBJ, honey! Hearts all around. Happy birthday, by the way. Belated happy birthday. Um, oh, it's so lovely to talk to you. Thank you so much for tuning in, honey. How you doing? Um, speaking on wounds, will bleeding or amputation come into play still? And uh, for instance, a light magical wound at the start of a journey that causes bleeding become a moderate wound or heavy wound by the end. So I believe the term hit points have, have been yeah, so around. Yeah, so if we, if we shift the entire system over to a hit point system, now imagine just like for starters that uh, every character has 30 hit points instead of three wound states. Um, and we start toning down the damage you take. Right now imagine that a light wound is 10 hit points and a moderate wound is 20 hit points and a heavy wound is 30 hit points or something like that. Uh, yeah. It might be. You could take a heavy wound and then another wound would kill you. So imagine more like 40 hit points. I mean, I'm still working out the numbers, but yeah. it's readapting the system so that I can have enough granularity so that you can take a number of wounds and you can respond to them. Also, right. uh, another humongous piece of this is that the skill system was never meant to end in its current state. The current state is right. just the beginning of the skill system. And so uh, in, in, the, in recent times, we've done a lot of work on the content so that the a lot of the stages or the encounters that you run into uh, respect whether party members have uh, healing skills, for example, and that can mitigate the damage that you took from a wound. Um, that's certainly going to continue happening, but more importantly, at a procedural level, uh, we're going to have things so that you take, you know, now something like that one stage where the two guys get in a fight with each other and tumble around, they could take like one point of damage. So that's like, so they oh, got like hurt, that. you know? Um, but not take <laughs> a light hilarious. wound, which if you had taken three light wounds before that, they're dead. Oh Another important feature. Can uh, they die in the tavern? No, no, they, no, they can't die in the tavern okay. because persecution doesn't occur in the tavern. That <laughs> no, said, I mean, we're not averse to people dying in the tavern, but we will have to build those okay. pipes at some point in the future. <laughs> so Sounds like DLC. <laughs> another important feature is when a character reaches zero hit points, they will they will have the status effect of dying. Mm. And I think the, well, at least the rule we're banging around is that you'll have one day to get that character back to the tavern. Wow. And if you do, then you can put them in the infirmary and they're, they're gonna start oh healing. Oh my god. Ooh, that almost builds the intrigue. Yeah. Well, right? there's, there's very little risk and reward if people just evaporate. Oh my god, now I'm trying to think of... <laughs> So I'm thinking in spreadsheets, guys, by the way. So I'm thinking in spreadsheets, and I'm like, oh, my God, what if they have the effect of dying, and all of a sudden they have some sort of, like, travel stage writing, you know, some sort of stage that happens in their, like, last dying breath, and they have some <laughs> kind of like a reminisce string, but they have, like, tell my mom I love her, and tell the, 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 this, and just some like, random shit like that. <laughs> Directly That'd regarding that, is we're finally going to sit down and spend the hard time and work to actually handle canceling quests and getting parties to immediately start returning back to the tavern. And so not only will they return back elegantly and, and correctly in a way that's clear and messaged right, right. Uh, if they were to drop below one active character, but we'll also be able to support players being able to cancel a quest manually and start, character start the party back home. So right. if someone hits a point where they're dying and you don't want them to die, you can start sending the party back. Now let's say they were more than a day away, because right now the way the feature is at least planned, after one day of dying, they're dead. Mm. Now, that seems kind of, I mean, it's, it is arbitrary, but part of the reason for it is that uh, we want to extend that entire system through the skills. So like the medical right. skills and the magical healing skills now can start 
extending that time frame. So now you might want to bring characters to have an insurance policy on people dying. You'll have a lot more control. Like the skills that you actually deploy on a given quest have a lot more of an impact. Mm -hmm. um, hit points. Uh, you know, if if the game was were to have hit points by this design today, everyone would have thirty hit points. Um, but at the same time, again, skills and certain traits, increasing those hit points, gaining hit points from level to level, um, having a higher level content do more damage. Mm -hmm. So low level characters going on high level content run the risk of getting potentially hurt more more severely. Maybe I even see. one shot if you get too crazy with it. Yeah. At the same time, we don't oh want to we don't want to block we don't want to block players from trying to like twink characters up and get them a bunch of experience points on high level quests. We just want there to be a legitimate risk in doing so. Now, some of the other... Oh, let me read some of the things that they've been saying. Uh -huh. So, okay. Uh, it'd be interesting to see a stage with a wound incurrence have a follow-up stage where the player rolls for different choices to heal while on the road. Uh, necromancers would be OP at that point, Sarah. Oh, <laughs> Amelia. Not clerics? Not clerics? <laughs> <laughs> Amelia would be in every single party with wounded for me. <laughs> well, here, I'll read out Jonathan? loud one paragraph. PBJ. Oh, I can't. PBJ. I miss you guys. Uh, are you guys going to GDC? Because you better be. If you guys are going to GDC, I would lose my mind. <laughs> I think that's a really good reason to go to GDC, at least. There I know. Are many like, I would, I would only go to GDC if I were to see PBJ and Marissa up in the his house. Oh my god, I miss those two. How you been? I've been doing very well. Life is good, PBJ. How about you, Boo? Okay, so, <laughs> so to that last question. Yes. This okay. is one of the features. It's it probably won't happen for March third. Right. But we have this idea that we're currently calling character skill use interstitial stage. Create new event type, like a light duty procedurally generated encounter to be called encounter interstitial, to happen intermittently during a day of questing for any given party. Ooh. These events will depict characters using their skills to benefit the party or avert negative results. The following are some examples. Character name rolls against medic skills. Needs 31. 54. Success. Wounded character's name, wound type's duration reduced by one turn. Now, granted, Whoa. that paragraph was written before we were talking about hit points, so now right. it just subtract, it just add a few more hit points to the right, character. Right, right, right. But those kinds Ooh. of things to like to kind of um, uh, mix up the the encounters that you see, because right now it's also a little homogenous in the uh, the quest log. You know, that you get stage, travel, travel, social, combat, and then the quest objective, and that, that's kind of all that there is there. And, and each of those uh, encounters have like a really, they're really beefy. There's a ton of display. There's all these numbers. Um, it gets a little repetitive. Mm -hmm. And so we want to kind of break that up. And yeah. more importantly, have the character's skills have a real big impact. Make you really feel like the characters that you chose to send along um, made their difference. Nice. I like that a lot. Uh, okay, let me see. Um, to... Of course, the infirmary would have to get here. changed to, to heal hit points instead of, you know, uh, take away wound status effects. Um, i stock up here, guys. Oh, you know, we've had the feature for loot boxes in the game for <laughs> many months now. Oh, they just no. don't quite work, and so we'll get that going in the near term as well. Not my loot boxes. <laughs> All right. Oh. I wrote this quest, but Sean rewrote it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Ixie one? Yeah, the Ixie one needed it. It needed it, so I'm good. Well, that's the thing, so any quest oh that was written God. last um, uh, in 2016. Man. Um, uh, I remember that time, too, because that's when I was I was learning how to basically put the data into the system. Yeah, Drac is asking some questions. We had so much less flexibility in how we could write those quests. Yes. It was just, it was a lot different. And yes. Things mm. have evolved quite a bit. What, what is they this question? have. Um, on the topic of hit points, light, medium, and heavy wounds would need a range. Max 30 HP, magic shield plus 5 HP, light wound is 1 to 5 points, medium is 6 to 10, heavy is 11 to 20. So you could do an encounter with trying to get the cat, fail it, and get light wounds minus 3 from scratches. Yeah, well, so 
For backwards compatibility, any place where you got light wounds before, we're just going to set it to five. Although I like your idea of a range, maybe we'll set it to three to seven or something. <laughs> and um, any case where you got a moderate, it'll become ten or medium ten. Right. And any place where you got a, a, a heavy wound would be medium twenty. So we'll, it'll take way more. The logic now is it's in some ways harder to die. But right now in the build, procedural damage to characters has been largely disabled. Mm. And we definitely want that to be happening. We want you to be taking damage here and there, especially if it's a combat encounter. And we didn't write into every single combat encounter the specific kind of wound any given character takes, because the idea is it's a fight. Anyone should be should potentially could potentially take damage. And so once we get that going again, uh, the amount of light wounds that would have been thrown around was just devastating. You just lose characters left and right. Any, especially any quest that was like longer than two days, was was basically <laughs> was a death burn. sentence. Oh, and that was creating the wrong experience. And uh, <laughs> I think I think when we, we you know we got that working like like a week before two patches ago maybe. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's that experience of playing it, which we sheltered you guys from playing, um, really <laughs> uh, I think prompted this change. Mm -hmm. uh, now riding on top of this change though is a number of other things. All these skills and traits. Uh, having more hit points, less hit points, uh, being able to travel faster or slower, be able to take shortcuts based on your survival skills. Right. Um, and, you know, as we continue, we want to mobilize and have an influence for all social and all mind skills and all combat skills. Um, all those things like reaching their way like an octopus into all the cracks of the game um, so that the characters on your roster will be able to, have, you know, you, they'll always have an interesting potential effect. Right. You know, we're, we're, we're going to get the beginnings of a staff system, maybe not for the March, uh, early March patch, but very soon after, so that you can start assigning characters to be the bartender, oh. or to run the infirmary, uh, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, to manage the Don't finances. Don't be dropping all the info right now, guys. Well, it's not so like you excited. haven't heard these ideas I before. Know. But, but, I, but this design pass to kind of stitch it all together, like the tightening of the shoelaces analogy, yeah. uh, really is, the goal of it is to get, to capture all of that. Yes. And, and to do so in a way that isn't just um, making the feature express itself in the game so that we can let you guys know that we're heading there. Uh, right. Really need to shift over from telling you we have a feature and having it in the game to making it really work well with all the other features. Correct. And that's really the phase we're in. This is a long period of time that we're going to be, like this is the longest period of time since launch uh, that we're going to be working on the game without having a patch. Uh, it'll be a solid, what is this? It'll look like, what, two months, three days, plus the, 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 the change from when did we, our last patch was December 22nd, was it? Mm-hmm. So, 9, 3, 12, plus 28, so that's 40, plus, uh, is January 31? January's 31, right? Uh, yeah, we're on the 31st right now. So that's a 71 day <laughs> run without a patch. <laughs> Woo! And so we're hoping to deliver Holy a significant Jesus. improvement. I can't wait to see what you guys check in in Unity, because well, I've been updating and I've been trying well, to Well, Eric is on deck to, to, yeah. to check in drink chains today, tomorrow, the next day. Ooh. I'm so excited. Okay, so there's some chat here. Um, will the various tavern decorations continue to be patch-based, or will they be redone as part of the week's progression? The week? Oh. Week's, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, so um, I have a strong suspicion, and we haven't broached this. Another thing that actually is going to happen in the, in the March patch is our alpha version of tavern editing. You'll be able to place trophies and change the colors of walls and the skins on Good. the furniture. Good. I know that seems like, you know what's interesting is that in essence it seems like a simple request, but I want it so much. Like, <laughs> I, I want it. I want it so much. I just, I want to own this tavern, but you know what it is. I'm, my history, guys, I was a, a restaurant manager, so I just want, I want control of these things. I, I read wanna, all that document you sent, by the way, and I'm going to start I, factoring it in. I, I hope, <laughs> I hope that it was useful, because once I started to write it, I realized that maybe it wasn't, I don't know if it was as helpful. 
<laughs> as a game designer, but you then... Know, it doesn't serve you much to worry about whether it's useful. You did it. And we'll see where it goes. Well, yeah. And, and actually, just and to... So I thought, even but, if it's for, for Sean to write way, something funny, like, I I thought something is in there. I don't know. I can assuage your fears. It was very <laughs> useful. Good, good. I know it's very kind of vague and big picture-y in a way. How much of Epic Tavern is vague and big picture-y? Come on. Mm. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Um, so what, what else? Um... Oh, and Sean said, and once we have staff positions, it opens the door for career-ending injuries where beloved adventurers retire as workers at the tavern. Woo! Honey. Hey, there's nothing I want to write, you. okay, so not for nothing, but I can write some, some good, good-ish for that stuff. Well, <laughs> the system will work such that you can pull that character out of retirement. That character can become, let's say it's a warrior that gets his arm cut off. And becomes the bouncer, or becomes like you know the um, uh, the blacksmith's assistant, or something. Or I a kind bartender. of like the idea of the. <laughs> they could become the a diplomat bouncer, after that. <laughs> <laughs> I love this idea of the one arm bouncer, though. Can I get a hashtag one arm bouncer? Nothing's um, so, going to stop you from putting him back into action and in a different role. Like, uh, let's say that. that warrior who got that career ending injury has, like, the title of uh, the savior of the Badlands. And, and in our meta role conversation we've been having, trying to figure out ways to make the storytelling and the writing data even more complicated and break our brains, um, uh, that person can be pulled out of retirement to become a diplomat. Oh, I love that. I do love that. Um, High okay, hopes. So, I aspire. Yeah. I mean, I have I have so many of those dreams, but I try, right. I try to keep them in check. Hawk says, uh, with that patch, will it break save so we need to restart? Just wondering. I'm I am not sure. Either way. I'm not sure. I don't think... Uh, nothing in our plan so far is is truly save game breaking. Uh, Memage did put together a very light duty, backwards compatibility um, module in, in the way we handle our patches now. Um, so we'll have to see uh, if we do actually get a feature into the game, into the build, that will break feet, um, break saves, uh, we'll probably message it immediately. Yeah, and you know what? I've, I've only come across broken saves twice for me, personally, which, which is less than the people I've talked to, but still it's happening, so it's an issue, right? Well, and and so I actually at brought... Launch, <laughs> all the see, saves were broken. Do you, yeah, true. Do you see the two laptops I have under my desk? Nice. So, so they're two of my old laptops uh -huh. that I decided to bring in so that we can test Epic Tavern on older systems. Oh, it's a good so call. That, it's a good so call. that we can try and get this uh, broken save thing under control, because... Because at the end of the day, if you don't have the hardware, I, I can understand that. But if if the hardware is okay, even though it's old, if it's still... Well, no, it's still anything that's safe along, we, and we, we find to, out about... Yeah, we need to we fix, fix that. Period. Exactly. There is no, there is no ifs, ands, or buts about that. So, safe Hawk, I have important. your best interest in mind. I promise and, you. And all I can say is, for now, nothing is, nothing is threatening the backwards compatibility of saves. Um, there right. is a lot that is being designed. Um, and especially for this patch, I would say there's a non-zero chance that we end up making a choice that might uh, that might break saves. Um, but if that uh, if that should happen, we're gonna let you know well before we deploy that patch. Nice. Um, let's see, uh, Halloween slash winter decorations. Aside from the tutorial, will we see other quest monsters with instant kill skills? I don't know about that. And then, we'll have to uh, that we'll one arm warrior is now your party's only cleric. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I just, I don't know. I kind of like the idea of having the... I like the idea, and, um, and the whole feature set with the procedural monster selection um, hasn't really gotten much further than procedural name selection of monsters. Mm -hmm. um, I can definitely imagine that the game will get pretty intense there once we can get past all this other stuff and get the basics working well together. <laughs> Um, I could totally imagine that one of some of those quests that already kind of pick random monster name could end up picking something like Lich, and then you're in big trouble and terrible things occur. Um, but we we don't have any specific designs in place, and uh, um, the existing feature set uh, doesn't support that yet. Yep. But I. Uh, I think I feel the same way you do about it. 
Oh man, that's so funny. <laughs> Drag was like, nothing threatens your saves except the current game state and power outage. <laughs> well, no, I mean, we, and we did find something recently with uh, someone save. We have. Uh, I know where, that was crazy. You know, of our of our like two hundred skills, uh, well, two hundred um, authorized skills because the data actually carries many more skills, and Drac would actually know that probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but He's some of our one. skills that existed before the current authorized crop of skills uh, don't support all the features in the game. And there was an item that I think it was from a typo or it was an old item that referenced one of those old skills, and that muses bought us. Okay. I think it was one of the random <laughs> random items okay. made in recent times. So I was I, like, I, oh damn, the chance that it's a typo is actually, is actually <laughs> probably reasonably high. Oh man. But but it referenced a skill ID that that didn't support all the other all the features in the game, and uh, that broke a person's save. Uh, we mm -hmm. did fix that, um, but I got to tell you, there's a lot of data in the game, and um, there's also a lot of really really low odds edge cases. That means the possibility of something happening exists. Uh, we've done, we've done a lot to mitigate that. And um, old item, I think it ended up says drag. Yeah, and I and I and I, you know, I, I changed the in, I changed the entry just yesterday, so I have a feeling anyone after the patch it won't be an issue. Uh, but theoretically, any of you could have that happen if sufficiently unlucky confluence of results occur. I like how the snowman is uh, in front of the the thing, but the snow doesn't melt. It's nice. It's kind of like a mutant shalob, huh? <laughs> Inspired by I mutant know. shalob. We need to go in there and uh, take our season. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, actually, yeah, that's what I wanted to say is um, we haven't put uh, the, the alpha version of our tavern editing um, doesn't include um, free placement of and the acquisition of props yet. Right. Um, but my, I have a strong suspicion that what will happen is that all of the props that we've ever made will eventually be available for purchase with, um, with gold. And once purchased, we'll, we'll have some mechanism for you to place them in the tavern. Right. Um, and this is all changing. I mean, everything you're seeing right now, guys, with this uh, character in our Oh, panel, shoot, you're right, this yeah. Is, this is all, and what about this lodging? Can you tell me? Lodging is lodging is in a middle is 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 in a vo is in a um, what's the right word? It's in a um, a vortex. <laughs> it's in limbo right now. Uh, ultimately, at the beginning, the idea of our rooms were there so that you could choose a character, put that character in a room, so that you could deal with that character tomorrow. Um, in the process, in the lead up to launch, it just got scooped in with the other options you have with characters, and it became one of the summons or one of the desires the characters could have, and it became just a way to make some income. Oh, there's eighty. I was wondering where you were at, Boo Boo. There you are. What's up, eighty? <laughs> Keep talking. Oh yeah, no, no, totally. And, and so, uh, we don't know exactly how we'll handle lodging going forward. Uh, mm -hmm. It may still be handled in much the same way it is, and that means that some characters will request a room. Uh, the way it works right now is anyone who does request a room does appear the next day, and that will continue to be the case. The real question is whether or not we'll move lodging onto a separate track and simply allow you to choose characters in the tavern and offer them a room. Uh, and at that point, then, we'll decide whether they could even decide to decline that room uh, or not. Um, and then after that, we would decide whether... Uh, the quality of the room would affect or make it in a, unacceptable for them to accept it, or you know, the, you know, there's like a there's like three steps there that we could take. Um, and Drax's like, go to your room, I'll deal with you tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. And that is that is but exactly see, what like the room is option, for. I like that option though. I like that option because it, 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 for me, it would be nice to spend less AP to deal with you tomorrow and get more AP when I get to deal with you, yeah. but you're just not as important enough for me to spend that well, AP now, or and just by I've logic, already spent it and I just found you, oh no, what am I going to well, do? And some insight into the conversations around this is just what you just said there is right. exactly what's been discussed. It's like, right. if you only have 10 AP, mm -hmm. then maybe we don't want you to spend an AP just to see if someone wants a room. So at that point, it kind of begs for the separate channel, so you can simply select a few characters and pop them into rooms. Oh at the same time, that's at odds with the idea that someone might come into the tavern wanting to stay for a few days. Right. 
and or uh, you wanting to sell rooms to patrons as part of your business. So there's there's some conflict there. All you know, all of the ideas have slightly different footprints and want slightly different things. Um, we're gonna have to figure out what what ends up being best for the overall system. All right, let me read some of this. Uh, <laughs> Amy was like, was thinking that it looks like the mutant snowman from Calvin and Hobbes. A little bit, yeah, totally. And, Farrow, and Drax said, uh, Gabby worked hard on it. It's adorable. Um, let's see. Drag said, uh, can those with rooms today be animated to leave the tavern once the request is filled so new adventurers have a chance to spawn? Well, so, okay, so right now we don't really have any infrastructure in place to spawn characters mid-turn. Right. And, um, partly because we create the list of characters, well, we are going to create the list of characters based on your menu selections and based on right. a number of criteria at the beginning of a turn. Correct. Um, that said, um, there are some slightly different ideas about maybe someone bursting into the tavern with like a quest or something to say so or that. add some drama into the situation. Oh, love um, the drama. Uh, the other thing is if you were to give a character a room and they were to walk out, um, some of the infrastructure in our game assigns the quests to characters in advance. Mm -hmm. And we wouldn't want you to send away a character that happens to have the next quest. Although there was a recommendation on the Steam forums recently that oh, asked it? for quest continue, which was a fantastic idea. Honestly, I... we've we've been banging around the idea of having multiple vectors to get quests. Right now, we only have the one that happens to be a character must give you a quest, and you must click on that character to get that quest. We're not really pleased with that. I mean. Right. If you think about it a little bit, I don't think you'd be pleased to. Oh. Um, <laughs> and so, if a que if there's a quest chain, why doesn't the next quest just unlock, right? It also another thing that having a less having less AP uh, gives us a little bit of good pressure to try to make the good solution. Um, there's also this other Same. idea that's not going to happen in the early March patch, but this idea of jobs, like actually having much more conventional um, Fallout Shelter, uh, World of Warcraft style follower mission, mm, um, yeah, what is it, the, right. the, the so Assassin's said, um, Creed thing where you can send guys off to do jobs, having having something along those lines, a kind of like not a one-man quest to fulfill some job. Right. What was this question? Uh, but different characters do wander around, 50% AP remaining, so these characters are already set to... Yeah, those have already been pre-selected. We just, we just hold them back. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, these questions are great, guys, so thank you so, so much for being a part of this. I know that we're reaching the end of our stream in a matter of, like, 10 minutes or so, um, but... No worries. Feel free to ask the questions now or ask the questions in our Discord, ask questions in our forums. And we can go to town in Discord. Oh, yeah. Yeah, totally. Have like a long, very serious, nuanced conversation about these features. Absolutely. So, um, just to give you that information, we're going to post it right here in the chat. So if you are not already part of our Discord, get all up ons, please. And you know what I was realizing is that I've never had a like a voice conversation with the um, the community Discord channel. We should start doing that a little bit. I think we should. Because then I it think becomes it would be, two way. Yeah, it would be so much fun. We should do kind of like a yeah, like once a week, once a week. You know, maybe on a day we don't stream, like a Tuesday or Thursday sure. or something. And then just from two to three, I'm going to hang out in this channel and chill and talk about whatever. Talk about whatever, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, it can be about be, Epic Tavern. Yeah, it can be about <laughs> Epic Tavern, but maybe about something else, you know? I would love that. Maybe about Drax insanely cool. Just not even, I mean, I don't even know how to parse it. The throwing <laughs> knives and the disarming. That story's gonna be famous in my brain forever. Yes. Everything from throwing knives to what you had for breakfast that morning. I think that this should happen. But, uh, or talk about Epic Tavern, you know? Yeah. Whichever. Yeah. Um, that could be awesome. I agree, Marissa. 
How would things like poison work with the HP system? Daily light wounds until cured, death if you get too well, low. First of all, generally but speaking, in the tavern. Get rid of this idea of light wounds. That's not happening anymore. Now you will yeah. simply take a number of hit points. Yep, hit points. So it's the hit backwards compatibility system. assigns a certain amount of damage to each of those Are we wound putting messages. Down the <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, consumables <laughs> is definitely something that's going to be happening. Okay. Um, um, I'm like, where are my Phoenix Downs, honey? <laughs> it's in the list of the objectives for our March patch, uh, but it is not at all clear that it's going to have sufficient priority to make it into the March patch. Right. Uh, however, uh, along with backwards compatibility assigning of a number of hit points for the wounds message, the wounds commands we put into our encounters in the past, right. we also need to come up with some new um, commands for us to just simply subtract a certain specific number of hit points or percentage of hit points from characters and we'll probably be using that going forward. Mm -hmm. uh, certain effects will simply decrement a certain number of hit points um, and you know for probably for the most generic of poisons um, since we don't want it to be just you know poison is something that characters frequently get it's something that happens all the time in our fantasy RPG and, and well maybe not as much in the literature side of things but it still does. Um, probably just be minus one hit point per turn period uh, plus one hit point more per stack of poison you get right. uh, that said there's nothing stopping us from having you know the really awful poison which could be pretty devastating um, and so there'll be it'll really boil down to a number of hit points lost per turn uh, other poisons could I mean the thing is once we get this rolling it does open us up for a lot of stuff like what's stopping poison from Making it so you can only go half as far every questication turn. Exactly. Or have it so that uh, this poison is a paralytic poison and halves your combat skill contribution uh, until it's been healed. Um. And that was how we went to talking with Tomo about cow tipping and how to actually accomplish for weeks on end. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I feel like that's some sort of <laughs> reference to... <laughs> I won't even. <laughs> I won't even. This team is set for failure. I totally effed up. <laughs> I totally screwed up this one. I just kind of picked one and put three of them on there. And uh, A 59% success chance. That's not terrible. Not terrible. I mean, it's more win than not win. Um... Well, you know, if you take the fantasy literature did, side of things, I did succeed. You have, you've often felt like the party had a less than 50% chance of success. Truth. Now, when it comes to the video game RPG side of things, that's very bad odds. <laughs> but I feel like we want to kind of like, you know, we want to break that up some. So, say you have an infirmary and nether poison is locked behind... Um, Infirmary level two are all characters doomed if you fall the if you fail the infirmary level two unlock quest. Oh, uh, if you fail the infirmary level two unlock quest, you still get the infirmary level two. Yeah. You just they just say mean words to you, and you don't get quite as much rewards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would. Uh, I would hate it if we didn't let the infirmary be unlocked. Well, and I, I think we're going to try Should to accelerate the uh, acquisition of certain facilities even right. further than we did in the last patch. See, I kind of like I like the idea of you failed this, but you can try again type thing. Yeah. And so I feel that that sort and, of and we thing have a should. we have a limited number of quests that do that. Uh, we 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 drifted away from it just because there's some complexity there. Right. And there was a period of time when uh, repeating failed quests um, caused a number of issues. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we fixed all those though. Nice. Like it. Actually, not that I look at it again. Is the pack mule fifth character slot coming back? Pack mule fifth. Pack mule. I don't know that terminology, but pack but the fifth mule. character slot, the fifth and sixth character slots are actually reserved for special um, uh, special situations where a character must go with you on a quest, and so we haven't. We haven't leveraged it yet. We don't have the plumbing in place. But the idea would have been like, if if there's like like a merchant you need to escort to something, and he's the one that's hired you for the quest, that he would show up in that slot. Uh, additionally, see. we've theorized, although none of our content does this, this idea where you could find a character 
out on your travels and bring them back to the tavern with you. And so we have these two open slots that we haven't quite figured out yet. I see. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, well, we're just about at the end of our stream. We just have uh, maybe like five or so minutes left, so feel free to ask your questions. But if not, um, the Discord link was posted. I will post it once more just, just in case it did not reach your computer space. Oh, and I have something fun to say, actually. This is, so this is just discussions. There's no design around it yet. Um, but we have been considering this idea of Tavern Keeper perks. And one of those perks, and it kind of came to mind because we were talking about the fourth and the fifth and sixth slots. Uh -huh. uh, imagine if you could fill an empty slot with a summoned skeleton. Like if the Tavern Keeper learned necromancy. Uh, imagine if you, if you complete the quest where you do the captain of the city guard a humongous life favor, that he gives you the ability to add one city guard to your qu to your party to fill an empty slot. I love that. And now you know tavern. That. Now tavern keeper perks is much much broader than that. But just the simple feature that you could click on one of those empty slots and put a skeleton in there, and they like add like you know five combat skill contribution points or something. It it's definitely tasty. I like that. Which now, if we're talking about empty slots, and that reminds me of this another conversation we've had of, of, um, of having a well, we we have aspirations at some point for the character record to have like a paper doll right. and have all the equipment be more conventional RPG equipment, Diablo and fit in slots, Diablo style, <laughs> yeah. Except that one of the well, slots you want to get to style. first get would right. be <laughs> a pet slash hireling equipment Ooh. slot, because nothing's stopping us from going that going that direction. Right. It's text. It has effects. Right. And because of all of this text like linking and the writing heavy nature of the game, there's nothing stopping your hireling from saying something or complaining or whatever. <laughs> or your dog saying woof. Uh, Jack said we used to have that fifth character slot and it was for pack mules or something extra originally question mark at least that's what Mimish had said at one point oh. I think could be totally misremembering as no no I don't think you're misremembering no it, I don't think but you that are was either. just totally ideas <laughs> yeah it was all very conceptual see this is what happens Tomo oh I my god I don't you pay lost, attention and I and I kill Bart you lost Bart Demon Chummer the troll slayer it's sad dude See, this is what happens when I don't pay attention. But see, now in the future, what would happen <laughs> is he would hit the point of dying, and now you'd be worried. You're like, I don't want to lose Bartholomew, you demon. And then charm. on the way back to the tavern, he's like saying his last words. <laughs> I and really, then, and we I really have to set. We hilarious. have to set uh, every time a character hits I'm dying, so far. something bad, a permanent negative I'm trait so gets accumulated. Far. And some of those can be mild, and all of them will be very interesting character developments. Mm. So it's like the um, what they say about like uh, Japanese ceramics. I'm eleven chance when they uh, in Japanese ceramics they try to accentuate the cracks in the ceramics because uh, glorifying damage that was overcome is an important part of the story. Oh, that's beautiful. It can be. It. Can it doesn't be. feel that way in our lives. I got to tell you. Well, see, I'm, I'm kind of close to the attack. No, it doesn't. <laughs> um, I think could, it could be totally... Uh, I just want to fill my fifth slot with my pet skeletal dragon, since we ran off and killed one in the east, or maybe that little nether guy. So, I, I, you know what I can I can or promise you? Or maybe Apothecary you, Gary. I can promise you that I will try to Probably allow for you to have that pet dragon creation. associated with a character, but that that pet dragon will never have a slot in the party. Now, if that if that works out that way, though, you could have a party of four, and have four pet dragons as well. Now, granted, they might be treated more like equipment than like actual characters, but at that point, then we have to ask ourselves, what exactly is a character too? Mm. Uh -oh. Um, but you could have a pack mule, and you could just tie demon chummer to it. Otherwise, your party speed should take a negative 50 uh, percent hit yeah and we're talking about stuff like that but see like if you didn't have the pack mule i don't know if players would be so happy with taking the 50 percent hit 
Um, you're right. Okay, you're right. Actually, this is a slightly different issue. Uh, you're talking about the features that we had always earmarked for the first expansion, which honestly, all those plans will you know be re reassessed and everything. But right. Um, uh, a very important feature we had always been talking about with respect to the first DLC and this idea of like a maritime uh, expansion pack and a lot of like uh, water stories and being able to have like boats that. and being able to assign a party a vehicle Ooh, like a like cart a or to be mounted um, and that would modify their ability to travel over particular terrains and how fast yeah. they go. That is definitely still on the table. That is not in, in the near term though. Yeah, I like that a lot. Later, man. Bye. 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 Yeah, I like that a lot. Richie! So. Do you want to come have a drink with us? <laughs> at, least, at least say hi. At least say hi and have a seat. Real quick and okay. We got a nice, uh, nice stream of dialogue here. Yeah, it was sounding fun. It's 516. Should we even like an hour? I know. I could have another drink. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Go grab that bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Tomar, I believe at GDC. Oh, it's actually raw. Right. It's not a bourbon. Oh. And that's probably why it tastes good. Oh. Um, actually, I, I, I'd have to say that ryes have kind of a drier edge to them, and they're kind of easier to drink in quantity. Than bourbon because of the sweetness. If, oh. if if you're the kind of person that sweetness builds up in your mouth as you have Por more drinks. Portrero. Portrero. Is it there an orange there? P oh yeah, oh, portrero. Yeah, pot rero. Pot rero. I'm saying port, but it's here. You first, my friend. Portrero. Portrero. That works. Okay, good. I don't need that much. Stop trying to thing. portray me as something I'm not. Rich, come over here so I can potrero uh, you uh, a drink. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a pet familiar companion slot in equipment would be nice too. Yeah. Cameras. Well, and that's the thing is like all fantasy characters Keep talking. have either room for a pet, a familiar, or a hireling. And it just kind of, in some ways, it breaks our conventional attitudes about what yeah. equipment is. But for us, it just becomes a door. Well, that adds another dynamic to our stream. Whoa. Ooh. Anyway. <laughs> it's kind of weird watching me gesture it's and kinda, talk. I know. <laughs> so we're watching ourselves on OBS, and then we're watching the delay on Twitch, and then we're talking to you, which is also on a delay, so it's quite interesting. Well, a just watching it magic is item would be fun in that slot as well. So oh, yeah, it. you're right. As some A character could have a... A sentient magic item. Although that said, what's stopping us from having any slot filled with a sentient item? You're like, I'm just a party of like 17 party. items that all just argue. Yeah, so a pet familiar companion slot in equipment would be nice too. Totally, I'm so into that. Um, the party speed hit could be explained because now you're having to carry a corpse back with you. Oh no, I think it makes sense. I just think that... um, uh. You're going to want to get your dying character back to the tavern in a hurry, and you'll be sad if it takes twice as many turns. God forbid it's two turns and it becomes four. Exactly. <laughs> um, at the same time, um, once we have, if we have sufficient features connecting to the skills, and then we feel confident that generally speaking you'll have ways to mitigate that, like if the average return time um, isn't so bad, uh, there's nothing stopping us from making those that making it work that way, because uh, we definitely have. Uh, uh, it is definitely part of the plan to have things like woodland survival allow you to travel through the woods at the same speed you might travel through plains. Uh, mountain survival allow you to travel through the mountains quicker. Um, certain uh, mine skills uh, allowing you to find shortcuts and just go quicker. Uh, yeah. like speed on map. Uh, I'm trying to figure out a way to make starvation a thing. Um, uh, you know, medics dealing with wounds. <clears throat> See, if I were out on quests like these guys, I would totally suffer from some starvation. I would have to duck out in some uh, pub or something. And Keeping that'll totally the change the character. <laughs> that'll change the character of traveling <laughs> through the quest. city versus traveling outdoors through the lands. Where is that quest? Keeping the blood on the inside. <laughs> Keeping the blood on blood the inside. Blood on the inside this time. I love, I love, love, love. 
Sean, since you're here, I love that title. <laughs> I love that title. Keeping what? the blood on the inside this time. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Dude, and that mountain Can we, here. I can't remember. Did I <coughs> make up Apothecary Gary or did you? Because there's part of me that thinks that I made him up, but now I can't remember because I was rewriting that stupid quest I wrote and it was terrible. And uh, I, I think I made up Apothecary Gary, but I can't remember. Um, the magic mirror of talking. Random chance for morale boost or pain, depending on the mirror's mood. Necromancer can speed it up. Allows you to chop up the corpse and spread the weight around since you'll just sew it back together later. <laughs> oh, nice. God. I don't think that's right. one of mine. Okay, Sean. I thought I, I thought I made up Apothecary Gary, but... I think you may have. I think I did, but... You're such a clever writer, and sometimes I just don't think I'm as clever, but that time I might have To be fair, Apothecary Gary isn't 100% Sean style. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. I'm, <laughs> he's more the smart clever. I'm more the goofy, stupid clever. <laughs> but uh, either way, I love Keep the Blood on the Inside this time. I freaking love well, that. Sean has a superpower of the raise the eyebrow and go, hey... That could be interpreted in kind of a messed up way. I I love <laughs> all of Sean's writing. It is pretty fantastic. And you know what's great is that I wish that him and our writer from Ireland or Scotland could get oh, together yeah, for we, coffee because <laughs> wouldn't that be the best? We just got to get him back on the project at some point. We yeah. Just need to find a place to get Graham back. They Graham and Sean yeah, would Graham have. Graham and Sean writing at the same time. Wouldn't it, it, it would be so crazy. I mean, think of think of some of the best stuff that. Uh, yeah, let's 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 find one of the old school Graham ones that just to remind. Sean, everybody. you and Graham. All right, where's would my have, drink? Yeah, where's your drink? Are we drinking old Portrero? Has it come to this? It it's come to this. Where is your glass? You need to get a classy glass. A classy, glass? a glassy glass. Wait, classy glass. A glassy glass, glass? A glass? A glassy glass? glass? or a classy, classy glass? A classy, a classy glass. glass. A classy glass. Okay, I so had to text my brother. One of my favorites from way from back then <laughs> was. Was. And I don't want to mess it up, so I'm going to actually read it directly from the data. Uh. I, my phone. Okay. I don't I'll want wait. it. So we're uh, pouring Rich a drink. I have about, you know what? We're going a little late on this stream, but you know what? Screw it. Screw it. I might have. I modeled much of the tone of my writing after Graham's quest. I thought he really nailed the proper vibe for the game, like at the tavern. I agree, honey. <laughs> Sean, you. So. Have gauged correctly, and I love I love everything you're bringing to the table. The writing is it's quirky, it's edgy, just on that line. It's it's a tightrope walker on that line of is this a pr inappropriate? But is it? But isn't it? But is it? But isn't it? And I love that. I love that. I love that. So so that that stage was. Um, it starts off with. Please pick the puppy one. I hope you no, pick this the puppy one. The party Wait, passes someone? a little close to an ancient tomb. Wait, in the view of the camera. And a wraith rises, rises to attack. One for the bartender. And then one of the results goes, the wraith discovers it, act, it can't actually hurt the party. So it instead follows them for a few miles, complaining about their lack of respect for private property. <laughs> To be fair, Sean did add to this particular uh, stage, Yay. and he goes, it, if you have a necromancer from the party, the stage says, the wraith discovers it can't actually hurt the party, so it instead follows them for a few miles, complaining about how lonely it is. The necromancer, whoever's name it is, raises a dead roadside bird as a pet, and the elated wraith blesses them in thanks. Aww. Wait. Wraiths can bless, a stunned hero says as they walk away, and then the party gets blessed. <laughs> wow. Love it. Hey, can so... You, can uh, you read the puppy one? 
God. <laughs> puppy one. <laughs> Read the puppy one. That's the one where Sean is adding new stages to it, right? Oh, yeah, bruh. Yeah, Sean has uh, rewritten some of my quests, which I'm so happy he did because <laughs> I wrote mine in a. Well, I mean, one not in a is... writing kind of space. I, I I wrote it as content, but not as. as a, <laughs> so as one a of the stages for the puppy quest, which who, who wrote the puppy? Well, that was that was a green quest back in the day, right? Which what, what? the heroes start traveling the alleys for oh, the yeah. puppy. Yeah. Seen a cute puppy anywhere? Hero one asks passersby. Quotes, with a face, just asking to be punched. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that wasn't me. <laughs> uh, Jack says, yo, Richie. Hello. What's up, Jack? How's it going? And then, and then, of, and then the quirky here. success uh, 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 response for that one is, the heroes track down the puppy and punch it right in the nose. <laughs> If it makes you feel better, the puppy definitely said something racist beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> that that is the puppy quest is one of my one of my favorites, just because it's it's really just so ridiculous and well, so. Raw. A, I, my favorite part about it is Rich feeling bad about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he was racist, he probably deserved. Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about punching. Puppies, by the way. Um, so Sean said, I added conditional var variations to a whole lot of older crossing stages, making them play out differently if you have a fire mage or a necromancer or historian, etc. It's awesome. And then um, Sean said, I totally steered clear of the puppy quest. <laughs> <laughs> Even I have lines. <laughs> I love it. Dude, the puppy is quest. It, the old woman, the old woman on the bridge quest. <laughs> that one is hilarious. That's a good one. Oh, you know, you know what <coughs> it is. That threw me for a fucking loop. Yeah, yeah that, that one's awesome. that one's really good, and you should you should look that one up. I think that the reason that the puppy quest struck me as funny as it was because I just I felt like Graham was behind his writing desk, and I and I picture scrolls, not like not modern office writing space here. Like I, I imagine scrolls and quills and just <laughs> Graham like behind like a pile of papers, and he's just like, "Fuck it, puppy's getting punched in the face." And and, and because of that, I laughed. I laughed so hard. He's just like, "Screw it, I'm doing it. We're punching a puppy." <laughs> and so it was. It was kind of funny to me. Well, man, yeah, you should look up. My guess is that the writing environment looks more like 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 a laptop at a coffee shop. Yeah, <laughs> really? or at the pub. More I like at the pub, him. right? Because he was in Scotland. Totally. See, I yeah, but that's the thing. I imagine him in just this random. Graham is Gandalf in your mind, isn't he? Yeah, like he's just in a random shack in, in Scotland and around him is New Zealand, but it's still Scotland. And nice. <laughs> nice. And Perfect. the hobbits are running around and all of a sudden there's just this this shack and that's where Graham writes his stuff and there's piles of <laughs> parchment and... Uh, <laughs> Okay, so what's happening? Um, Farrell said Wraith was the one with the follow-up, right? Or was that a different stage? I remember talking about some stages that would evolve if you kept hitting it. Oh, yeah, w that's the Wraith oh, horse one, isn't it? Oh, man. Wasn't that the Wraith horse one? Like, we, d we don't have any of the evolving stages working yet. And, uh, oh, those are going to be crazy. And, and rather than evolving stages, actually, to fit in our system better, I think the feature will do it first, at least, is... Oh, sorry. To have stage it's the same. pairs. Oh, is this ground world? Go ahead. Oh, just to have like stages that are bound to each other, so that there's one stage, then another, one stage, then another. What did you pour? That, it looks like you got cleaning, <laughs> cleaning stuff. <laughs> what did you pour in there? <laughs> it was a. Uh, it's a. Uh, it's a. Uh, it's just uh, so different than what I'm drinking, so it yeah. has a different effect. But now it's nutty on the aftertaste. At first, fruity. Then nutty. Is that old Bardstown? No, this is Jack Daniel's Rye. Oh, Jack oh. Daniel's Rye it makes sense. That's okay. No, yeah. what's interesting it's, is it's from so what we're amazingly drinking. okay. But dude, it's so much better than Jack Daniel's though by itself. I mean, yeah. come on. No, I would agree. But because we're drinking this, didn't it have a fruity? No, it has a really weird uh, nutty fruity edge. And then yeah. nutty yeah. after. Because this is very conventional yeah. rye flavor. A little bourbon e. 
Maybe um, a little heavy on the corn, I guess. The one where the guy who gets stuck under a rock evolves in four stages. Oh, as yeah, he yeah. We were talking, yeah. That's going to be interesting. Yeah, that one is going to be amazing. And the body. Well, we have to figure out a way to do it. Uh, uh, you can't say that's going to be amazing. No, we have to way to get there. <laughs> this is me being game runner. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. <laughs> Oh, I'll give man. That Sean said, uh, <laughs> "If you fail it, the next time it comes up, you see his corpse there. Then the skeleton the next time, where you notice another item that launches a quest." That's oh, already in. Sean! Sean's. Did you GV that one up? Can you do if multiple GVs though? Okay, so let me just tell you my exploration of the data sheets. Um, so <laughs> you've been data spelunking. So I've been data spelunking, and uh, when I go into the stages, I see G V if at this there if only this and that and then this happens, and it is crazy. It's this maze and this freaking well, labyrinth. To be fair, of, like some stages say something like, "The party enjoys a beautiful sunset." That's it. That's all you see in the stage. Just that's that that those words, right? Screenshot me others? something and put it in Discord. I want <laughs> I want to show them what, what Actually, I Actually, we should seen. find the one that Sean recently posted. Find, that is yes, a beastly please, stage. Please, that is just please. A, I want them to see. I want them to see what happens because logical chunk this of text. shiz <laughs> is cray cray, yo. Okay, um, <laughs> I'm cracking rich up. At least I can crack somebody up. Um, if you, <laughs> I mean, it's, that's working with the current build totally works. All with GVs. Speaking of amazing, are we getting a full release long song from Dave? Uh, if it happens, the I'm maze sure you is will. half the fun. I will. Song? I will. Yeah, whatever. I sure. will make. I will make this happen. Um, Whether or not I make Dave make it happen, but here's the thing: he said he's taking guitar lessons again. So. Oh, you know what? Also. Oh, and Gabby. Gabby's taking bass lessons. Gabby. Oh. Gabby. Oh, Come bum, over bum. here, Gabby. We're gonna have an awesome bass line for the. Uh, Shoot. For the lunch, for the Sean lunch. Sean snipped song? it. Hey, how do yeah, I give you this? Is. Yeah, we're going to do it. Sarah, lunch. how do I give you this? I I'm going to play the percussion. Snip it. Meaning the I triangle. Got it. It's an image. I got an image. Where do I put it? The, the tambourine. It's it to me directly, and then I'll okay. piss on the thingy. Oh, that's a gabba. <laughs> oh, that's a gabba. Wait. <laughs> that's a gabba. She does, she does live, guys. She's right there. She See? lives. We didn't. We didn't, uh, right, we didn't capture her image. or put her hostage oh or oh I, I've whatever. been hiding under the table. She's, <laughs> been, she's been hiding under her desk. Oh, you did? Okay, so let me show you what's happening up in this. So just imagine music. comparing that to the party enjoys a beautiful sunset. Jesus. Like, like ten Jesus words. Jesus Christmas. Ten words versus oh, sweet. Versus this. Um, oh, you're right. You can just put that up on the screen, right? Um, I'm gonna see if I can. Can you guys see this? I'm gonna click. Oh yeah, you can. Ooh, Discord is the sh isn't it? Drex says Gabby. <laughs> <laughs> and data spelunking. Yes, that is what I do. I data spelunk. Uh, Drax does a fair amount of data spelunking too. Yes. Do you guys want horrible news? Yeah, I'm in. What? Uh, Lynn was, uh, is no longer at, uh, Bar Jackalope. Oh, that's terrible. Aww. What? That's terrible. What yeah. happened? It's apparently, yeah, after the, the shenanigans with the, the opening, or the, uh, the fourth anniversary, where they had their, their employee party, and then they had their employees go work at this fourth anniversary thing after the party. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, apparently she went and talked to him about it and harsh words ensued. Oh, and then no. later unemployment ensued. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, not no. good. Oh no. Not good. She's like, on the plus side, now I have time to go to your scotch nights. Oh shit. Oh, I'm like, oh, if no. we throw a scotch nights now. Uh, actually, speaking of which, I mean, I think, I think we should probably, probably do one maybe right after the patch. Oh, my Lanta. Yeah, we no, we have GDC. Yeah. When is GDC? The end of March. March. Oh, that's the end of March. How about, how about the first week of March? How about in, like, June? <laughs> well, I mean... June? I mean, 
that, that no, there, I think funny. that there could be um, one in June too. Gosh, yeah. when can we? When can we do a scotch night? Oh, lives. I thought you. Sh- I thought you said she lifts. I was like, what? Gabby lifts. She lifts. Bra. She uh, lifts, bruh. She, she lifts, she lifts <laughs> under the a table. base under the table. <laughs> Whereas when I'm under the table trying to look at the back of my computer because my eyes are failing, I cannot tell what I'm looking at anymore. You're under the oh, table no. while you drink other people under the table. Oh, no, I'm on the table oh. trying to just read. You know how right, you, you go under there, right, trying to fix the yeah. back of your computer, right? And you're accustomed to your good vision and you see everything on the back of the computer. You know now how over I see, it now I am with the back of computers? Fuzzy, That's fuzzy why I have numbers. a laptop. Oh, no. I'm over at the backs of computers. I just want to be on the sides. Yeah. Not being able to see that, though. That's, that's, that's scary. That's scary. That's scary. But well, look I mean, how much I mean, cool that's, stuff that's I can do with my laptop. Shit, you know, getting my eyes are doing that shit, dude. I, I don't, I don't have to do it. I can't see stuff that's closer than, like, like uh, like twelve inches, okay, or thirteen inches, or fifteen You're inches. Reading glasses. Tomorrow it'll be sixteen inches, and then the year after that it'll be seventeen <laughs> oh, inches. Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> and then the robots. Well, and then maybe it'll oh, get no. so bad someday I'll oh, actually no. wear reading glasses and actually use them. But I've tried a couple times and I just lose them. No, just keep so yeah, guys, out if you saw come. the link that I posted, that's the. Uh, it's like that's what is one it? That's of like, the examples that's at least, that's at least, of it's at least ridiculousness. Sh- If GV158 equals equals false, most warriors who face me don't get to tail the tail. That's like 200 words right there. Dude, look at it. It's about 200 words. Look at it. Look at it. I'm making you look at it. Sean, you have a triple and going there, man. And, and, and. Oh, my God. Look at it. So this is this is an example of... One of our... One, two, three, four. Sean, do you actually even know the ex- explicitly what the difference is between an assignment and a comparison? <laughs> if he doesn't, that's okay. Because he makes it's stuff not like something that. that It's not something that you know. <laughs> yeah, I, had, I learned it like... I learned it like probably like five years after I was... I had been using it. Really? They're like that. They like they use the like, coders use words, right? And I just like I'm like, oh, I make sense, sort of, or just didn't. Oh think yeah, about I never, it. I never fully learned. The and then once it gets explained, then you know after that. But yeah. whatever, you know. Hilarious. Out of control. Hey, so uh, news recently was that Microsoft bought PlayFab. I saw this on your. Yes. Oh yeah, I saw that. Um, I'm also hearing that there are rumors that they might buy a large video gaming company. Uh, like uh, Amazon? Other one. Like, like EA's one that's been mentioned. Microsoft? Can they afford EA? Valve is one that's being mentioned. Microsoft oh, can't afford Valve. Oh, damn. They're about, they they got a lot they're about around. They have a lot of money, but they can't afford Amazon, Valve. Really nice. They make those USB stick computers would be. now. Just plug into your TV with the, the Wi Fi JBM dongle. $20 the end of the Frozen Games. One is his. Oh, sorry, the end of the Frozen really Games one is hysterical. There are six timelines the, running the, in like some of the cells. Yeah, we coders just through, throw words uh, in and hope it all works. I think it was like, s- unless I'm remembering wrong, something along the line of thirty-three billion. Revenues. Go through PC. Go through PC. Okay, so they probably like they're probably at least a third of it, if not half, right? But yeah. And they don't get all the revenues, and then you like That's multiply the revenues by six. I mean, I think That's you get five 20. million a year. You get to twenty. Easy. Yeah, maybe thirty. <clears throat> I don't think Microsoft can afford that. <laughs> yeah. Now they can buy every other potentially big game. Company. So what did PlayFab do before though? PlayFab was. PlayFab is like a networking services. Okay. Company. Yeah, okay. they do like like um, like user account stuff and like server. And server. Okay. Yeah, that type infrastructure. of infrastructure. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. So basically, multiplayer if shards, stuff like that. Do they do that too? Yeah, okay. and they'll and they'll and they'll help you out and try to figure out how to get everything set up. That's cool. That's cool. <coughs> well, we're pretty psyched because we have some buddies who were involved in that back in the day. Yeah. I guess still involved in that. That's pretty awesome. Woo-hoo. Good things. Good things for good people. Man, good happy. things for good people in 2018. I tell you, this year is the year. Yeah, honey. we're gonna get Sarah a monitor that doesn't have a gigantic line through it. Dude, this monitor though. Well, Sarah, do you want to trade with me? Can we? No. <laughs> oh, it turns Tomo's out monitors, my monitors don't have lines in them. Tomo's monitors are four by three. 
Although <laughs> although my monitors are older than my okay, children. Okay, guys. So my monitor <laughs> has this like weird line in it. Okay, so we're gonna, gonna start now. Yeah. So, okay, so here's my monitor. Okay, here's my desk, right? So here's what I'm working off of, my beautiful Asus uh, gaming, laptop. gaming laptop, and it's great, and my sticky notes and my blank whiteboard and zebra head. And then we have the monitor with, like, tons of sticky notes on it right now. And the and lines. A, and a shot glass because you got to have that when times get tough. And then, yep, like, or happy. Then, or happy. Might and then you have the, the monitor, yeah. right? So, so here's the monitor, and there's this weird... There's this weird, oh, like, gray sense. line right here, honey. Like, there's this weird... And this is why we weird. will never buy LG monitors again. So don't, don't buy... Every single one of our LG monitors. Don't buy actually. these LG monitors. Well, look at these monitors, though. How about these? And what Sarah says no to those, trading, trading with me on these. Those things are still so he has, solid. So he has Dell monitors, and these monitors are crystal clear, honey. They're like, from 1963. You they're from like 1942, and 1942, these uh, and sorry. these monitors are, are still holding up, three. honey. They are They're still holding three. up. <laughs> Gabby, what monitors are you using? Uh, Acer and Windows. So Does Dell, Dell monitors. Okay, no. that's what I thought. Uh, Wait, what maybe I? it's because we drop all everybody else drops their monitors on the yeah. floor. Yeah, I always disconnect my monitors. Oh, uh, she does a decent job of not dropping them on the floor, Sarah. Yes. <laughs> um. Correction, this monitor was provided to me. Probably by Dave. He probably threw by it. By Dave. Me. And he probably threw it at me out of anger. <laughs> it's like, Dave Sarah, why aren't you floor. doing this? Now I don't have my see and this this kind of monitor can't even get you had that can't weird even get this camera it. back. Mm -hmm. Had a back. slight angle which made it just a little crazy. <laughs> Speaking just a little crazy, I've been yeah. thinking about this feature and I wanna call it the uh -oh. string string token. What? The string string token? Yeah. The string string? It makes perfect sense. It's the perfect word for it. It's just a little weird. <coughs> what oh, is yeah? it? It's a string token what is it? or a string mm -hmm. that we call on a database oh, to yeah. associate the string. Yeah. Why? It should be called a string string token. Because there should be there should be that. There should be that. Exactly. That we that can put sense. a string in a chat. database uh, and then call on it, right? Right. String string token. Microsoft is rumored to be trying to buy mm. Valve, EA, and PUBG. It's on the or list of things. Or not and. Not and. PUBG um, devs reported $712 million profit over the past eight months. Uh, want me to send you my extras? I have five extras since I moved to using a 48-inch TV. No, honey. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's so nice of you. Did you say five extra monitors? Yeah. Wow. But not for nothing, did anybody play that SOS game? Because that game is much more entertaining than PUBG. Really? It is. I haven't, I haven't, it is. Have to try that. Well, it is. What is the SOS game? Am Dude, I, am I just gotta, it? Please go to Steam and check out SOS because Oh, I saw that the advertisement. Ish I... is so hilarious. So PUBG isn't like this like super polished, like rich, nuanced experience. No, but 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 all it's of just a platform for people. They, but they play but you have to, upon you have to watch. the yeah. Yeah, you gotta watch this. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. What were you gonna say? They play upon what? Well, it's just play people upon playing the, upon their evil. <laughs> well, it plays upon the basic oh, this instincts good. of humans: survival, yeah, fear, comedy comedy, sex, like all these things, it plays upon it because it's... Wait, there's sex in the game? No, but... Wait, is no. SOS but like Left 4 Dead, but... <clears throat> it's like Left 4 Dead like meets... Right. Well... But put a girl in this game, and come on. Right. Okay, so, like, the, so the it's idea like is, Left that, for Dead is that they're personalities. Meets... They're supposed to be game show personalities. Yeah. Oh, okay, but so it's... So you it's have... Really it explains active. to you yeah. what you're like. Yeah. So it kind of... kind of shovels, shoehorns you into behaving like that type of person and they even do like an intro thing at the beginning and they say oh here put your intro out for everybody and they let you record a little intro and here's the thing they require you to be uh streaming on hero tv which is a new require kind of, yeah damn to to stream onto a, another 
kind of thing where people actually watch you and right. vote on your stuff because there's a certain voting aspect to that game and okay. so you have to be on their client you need, in you need the audience the audience is part of the game the yeah. audience is Got part it. of the game which is which is hilarious because only out of 16 people three survive so you have to yeah. build relationships and three surviving is better than one surviving because now people can connive yes and you know I it, was I was listening to this just yesterday for two hours and nice. laughing hysterically. Yeah, you were dying. I was I was <laughs> I was laughing hysterically. It was really really funny. You know, I, though, the, the, the just looking at this video without hearing sound did get me to think of Left 4 Dead meets Jumanji. Well, yeah. and it's and it's PUBG meets oh gosh, what else? PUBG meets Japanese game show? Streaming yeah. meets, yeah. yeah, meets that kind of thing, and it's hilarious. I like it, it's interesting. And they have spatial audio, too. Cool. You can only hear the people talk if they're within a certain Dude, the best area. use of spatial audio, by the way, Splinter Cell, the, uh, the multiplayer game. Yeah. Uh, the multiplayer mode, where some people are guards and some people are the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the special forces guys. Right. If you assassinate somebody, you could you could whisper into their ear. See, and, that's, oh. and, that's, and see, that's kind of like this. You can only hear people if they're within like five feet walking distance of you, cool. and you can talk to people on a radio and Dude, tell them how to go crazy to a certain channel and la la la. If I and can then yell, the viewers and you can, can vote further. on the weapons that you Ooh. get, and it's it's hilarious. Yeah, imagine though, though, just imagine playing a game where you need help. And you're yelling at the top of your lungs, hoping that you yell loud enough <laughs> and that, that it goes far enough that somebody hears you. How and intense the game is, is that? That's amazing. You could, you, I mean, could, hello. Uh, you could track that. No, you totally could. And then yeah. now, now, now it's like, mom's like, "What is going on?" And someone <laughs> screams, "Help! I need so help!" We at are, the top of their lungs. We are on a tangent, guys. So I think uh, we we love we've, being on tangents. We love being on tangents, but we're gonna end the stream. Oh, but like it was time. it was quite the amount of fun. We're gonna do a quick shout out before we leave, though. So we have our lovely moderators. We had AD and Drac in on the stream. Um, we have our viewers. We have Jamie, the Wrong House. A wild dragon we had a couple people you know pop in and out and it was a lot of fun so thank you guys so so very much for tuning in i know fun. that we don't while we don't have a ton of content to play for you right now we hope that we are providing you all the things that are yet to come and uh Toma was so nice to come in today and uh, in the stream, I mean, to kind nice of talk about m more of the design work that's being done. So I hope you guys are excited as much as I'm excited as a player and as a designer to get this to you guys. So thank you all so very, very much. Yay. And Rich was here. Wee! Yeah. <laughs> Bye, guys. So you all have a beautiful night, and we will see you on Friday. Oh. And seriously, if you guys have want to continue the conversation in Discord, anything that I discussed, uh, please feel free to field. Yeah. Yep. We are on Discord, and again, I'm going to paste the link into the chat so you can get that Discord link, because we want to hear from you. We want to hear from you. We want to get all the questions, give all the answers, and everything of that nature. So here you go. Ba -ba 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 -bam. And we will see you on Friday where I'll wrangle somebody. Whether it be myself or somebody else. Either way, you're going to have somebody on Friday and it'll be amazing. And it'll be Friday fun day. Maybe we'll be playing SOS. Maybe we'll be playing SOS. <laughs> because that game is so much fun. But either way, bye! Bye!